بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسول أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى لنا ولكم التوفيق والسداد نبدأ بإذن الله تعالى بدراسة كتاب منهج السالكين وتوضيح الفقه في الدين للشيخ العلامة عبد الرحمن بن ناصر بن سعدي رحمه الله تعالى نعم هو من طل... من من مشايخ الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى نعم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد just before we begin I'd like to remind the brothers who are outside that the lesson is starting so if you could please come inside and attend the lesson after this the sheikh mentioned that we begin with the guidance of Allah and the help of Allah the study of the book Manhaj Salikin which was authored by a sheikh al-imam Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'idi rahimahullah who was from the teachers and the mashayikh of a sheikh ibn Uthameen rahimahullah Naam Limadha nadrus al-fiqh And why do we study fiqh? لأن العبادة لا تقبل إلا بالإخلاص والمتابعة لهذا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الإخلاص ولهذا ندرس التوحيد والمتابعة لهذا النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام ولهذا ندرس الفقه نعم Why do we study fiqh? Because any act of ibadah is not accepted unless those two conditions are fulfilled The first of those two conditions is الإخلاص, sincerity and this is why we study التوحيد The second condition is المتابعة knowing and following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we study fiqh so we can learn the manner or the method of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in fulfilling ibadah خلي هذا في الآخر قربوا علينا شوية come close نعم sitting in the back طيب لماذا اخترنا دراسة هذا الكتاب منهج سالكين and then why specifically have we chosen this book منهج سالكين مختصر Because firstly it is concise and summarized and because the ulama advised with this book and because the author he mentions each ruling with its evidence and also the correct methodologies to begin with the concise books before the more detailed books. نأخذ الكتاب كاملا بسرعة يعني باختصار. So we want to take an overview of fiqh, an overview of the book. نعم. الفقه ينقسم إلى قسمين. Firstly, the study of fiqh is divided into two main sections. عبادات ثم معاملات. Firstly, عبادات which are the acts of worship, and then معاملات which are transactions and interactions. نعم. نبدأ دائما بالعبادات لأنها أشرف وخلقنا لنعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى قبل المعاملات. And the books of fiqh they always begin with the chapters pertaining to ibadat. Why? Because ibadat are more virtuous and more noble. And secondly, because we were created to worship Allah. تلفون. أنا أعرف أعطينا التليفون ما في مشكلة أنا أريد أكتب أيضا يعني أنت تكتب فقط نعم هات. عبادات نبدأ بها لأنها أشرف وخلقنا لنعبد الله ثم معاملات So عبادات because عبادات are more noble and we were created to worship Allah through these عبادات and then after this the معاملات نعم العبادات ما هي So what are the عبادات أركان الإسلام الخمسة They are the five pillars of Islam. الشهادتان. The two شهادة. وهذا فيه طهارة الباطن. إذا كتاب الطهارة أول شيء. And through the شهادة, a person purifies his inner self, and this is the first aspect of طهارة. ثم كتاب الصلاة. Then after this, the book of صلاة. ومع الصلاة الجنائز. كتاب الجنائز. And along with صلاة is the book of fasting. ثم the book of funerals. نعم ثم بعد هذا الزكاة والصيام والحج 
and then after the book of funerals is the book of zakah and then the book of fasting and the book of hajj man yu'id alayya hada so who can repeat this for me qulna al-fiqh yanqasim ila ila qismin we said ibadat wa mu'amalat we said that fiqh the books of fiqh are divided into two sections firstly those chapters pertaining to ibadat and secondly mu'amalat transactions and interactions awwal shay kitab at-tahara firstly is the chapter of purification thumma kitab as-salah ثم كتاب الجنائز. then صلاة then جنائز funerals. زكاة صيام حج. and then زكاة fasting and حج. تمام. أتى بأركان الإسلام. and these follow the pillars of Islam. هؤلاء الفقهاء يؤلف لك الذي تحتاج يكتب لك الآن. and those فقهاء they wrote these books for your benefit. whatever you require in your life, this is for you. ماذا تريد الآن؟ so what do you need? أول شيء تريد تبيع وتشتري. The first thing you need is to buy and sell. فيقدم لك كتاب البيع. And so they give precedence to the book of transactions. تمام. بعت واشتريت. After you have bought and sell. وحصل عندك مال. And you have saved some money. إيش تريد الآن؟ What do you want now? تتزوج. You want to marry. يقول لك الخطبة ويعني شروط النكاح والعيوب في النكاح وكذا. So the ulama they mention. The proposal or the engagement and the conditions of nikah and so on and so forth. تزوج. After you have married, ماذا يصنع الآن? What do you want to do? هل عشرة النساء? You need to learn how to live and interact with the women. تربية الأولاد. And how to cultivate cultivate children. تزوج وجاء الأولاد. You married and children were bestowed upon you. ماذا يريد الآن? So after this, what do you need? كلا إن الإنسان لا يطع الرعاه استغنى الآن تبدأ المشاكل شبع وأكل وشرب وتزوج مشاكل الآن نعم الله سبحانه said that verily a man begins to transgress after he sees himself as being self sufficient so after a person married and earned and saved money and ate and drank now there are problems which are occurring طلاق so divorce happens طلاق وعدد صح نعم نون طلاق and نون the waiting periods طيب طلق الآن إيش عندنا and then the next chapter after divorce what the فقهاء speak about أهل الزوجة الآن يأتو ليش طلق أخوها أبوها صحيح مشاكل شيء فشيء جنايات نعم so after there is divorce the family of your wife or your ex-wife, they come, the brother, the father, why did you divorce? What's the problem? Then, and then there are transgressions and crimes. So then after the chapter of crimes or, or transgressions, what do the fuqaha mention? Then you have to go to the court. And so the fuqaha, they mention the, the, book, of, the book of qada and the book or the chapter of qada contains Witness statements and penal punishments. نعم. باع واشترى وورث وتزوج وطلق وجنا وحدود وقضاء. إيش بقي الآن؟ So after a person bought and sell, sold and ate and drank, married and divorced and inherited, and then there was crimes and then those transgressions. And then a person had to go to qada, and then after this, the penal punishments were uh, prescribed. Then what's next? And then after all of this, the books of food and drink, and hunting, uh, and clothing, all of this is mentioned. So after this person has achieved all of this, you read. يختم خلاص. Then that person he wants to finish. يختم بإيش؟ And what does he finish with? بماذا؟ فقهاء. هو ما انتهى من المشكلة الأولى يتزوج الثاني يسوي مشكلة ثانية. لا مواريث مع البيوع. الإرث مع البيع. So the laws of inheritance or the study of inheritance it it is with the buying and the selling. يختم الفقهاء يبدأ الفقهاء بالطهارة. So the fuqaha, 
They begin their books with purification. So you purify your inner self before you purify your outer self. Either begin with Tawheed. The Fuqaha, even they begin with Tawheed. then after all of this they begin their books with a book of purification and this is a tawheed and they end with one of two chapters either the book of al-itq and this refers to emancipation and this is as if a person is freeing his own neck and emancipating his own neck from the fire or the book of al-iqrar it's as if a person is affirming his tawheed affirming his la ilaha illallah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever's last statement was la ilaha illallah there's nothing between him and jannah except death so it's as if even in finishing the books of fiqh, it finishes with a tawheed. Tamam. Mafhum? Khalas, intaha kitab manhaj. Wallah, intaha. Naam. Tas aham shay hadha anta tasawwar al fiqh. Hadhi awwal khatwa, ni'ma awla. Mararna ala kool, yani ghalib kutub, al kutub al mawjooda fi hadha al kitab. Naam. Hadhi aham shay. The first and most important step when it comes to fiqh is for you to have an overview or a picture of the issues of fiqh. And this is what we have done. We have just gone through the majority of the books of fiqh, how they are structured in terms of chapters and books. So who can repeat this for me? Naam. Subhanallah. Qultu sahl al-an. Yalla, bismillah. Naam. Qismin, naam. عبادات ومعاملات وما يلحق بها نعم طهارة صلاة جنائز زكاة صيام حج المعاملات بيوع ومواريث so buying and selling and then also inheritance نكاح طلاق عشرة نساء جنايات حدود قضاء أي نعم هاك معروف يعني خلاص تمام طيب هذه الأبواب اللي تمر معنا so these are the books or the chapters of fiqh which will pass by نعم طيب بعد الدرس تفتح منهج سالكين وتقرأ الفهرس حتى تستحضر after the lesson, if you download the copy of Manhaj al-Salikin, it's available on the website. Go to the index of the book and go through the chapters and you will have an overview of the chapters which we will cover. Which book do we begin with? At-Tahara. The book of purification, At-Tahara. At-Tahara qismain. So, Tahara is two types. Tahara tibatin wa Tahara al-Zahir. The purification of your inner self and the purification of that which is apparent. So you purify yourself from a shirk. And also innovations and sinning. And as for the physical purification, then it is two types. يعني نجاسة تتطهر من النجاسة في البدن والثوب والمكان. So first there is the tahara purification from al hadath. And نشرح al hadath. لا لا سنشرح. So first of all there is tahara from al hadath and al hadath is major and minor. A person purifies himself from major hadath through al ghusl. And a person purifies himself from minor hadith or minor impurity through wudu. And then there is khabath, najasa. And then there is purifying oneself from a najasa, physical impurities. And so you have to purify or cleanse your clothing 
and your body and also the place in which you are praying from these physical impurities. So purification is done using water and this is the base. And there are two types of water, that which is pure and that which is impure. Or a person can use sand or soil uh, for purification and this is secondary and this is through a tayammum نعم. ماذا سنأخذ في كتاب الطهارة؟ so in the book of tahara which matters which will we study نعم. من يقول لي؟ who knows نعم. من الشرك. we will study the inner purification and this is purify, purifying yourself from shirk so you have to purify your inner self from a shirk and then you have to purify your physically you have to purify yourself or no. we can say physical purification and this is from hadith and najasa physical impurities and then spiritual purification, and this is purification from shirk. نعم. طيب. الحدث قال عندنا حدث أكبر هذا يرتفع بالاقتصال. So we said that there are two types of hadath, which is a state of impurity. Major impurity, this is purified through غسل. من يجب عليه الاقتصال؟ متى يجب الغسل؟ When is غسل obligated upon a person? نعم. من يعرف؟ Islam al-Kafir When a non-Muslim accepts Islam Maut ghayr al-Shaheed Ay insan yamut Muslim La bud yugassal wa kaffan Illa al-Shaheed When a person When a Muslim dies Any death except martyrdom Any Muslim who dies Except for the martyr Has to be shrouded And before this washed Iza tahurat al-mar'a Min al-Haid wa al-Nifas La bud taqtasil And also when A woman is into the state of purity after her menses or her periods, then she has to perform ghusl. If there is a discharge of semen from a person who is awake or he was sleeping, and then of course, intimate relations. How does a person perform ghusl? So there are two ways of performing ghusl. There is the most perfect manner and this is encouraged. And then there is the minimum way of performing ghusl and this is the easiest. The easiest manner of performing ghusl is that first of all you make an intention in your heart. You mention the name of Allah. And then you ensure that water it touches every part of your body and under and your hair as well, along with rinsing your mouth and your nose. And then with this, and the, with this level of ghusl, a person can then and then can pray salah without needing to perform wudu. And then there is the second manner of performing ghusl. And this is the most perfect manner. Firstly, a person begins with washing his private parts, the front and the back. And he makes the intention in his heart. He mentions the name of Allah. He, watch, he washes his hands. And then he rinses his mouth and his nose and he blows out the water from his nose. And then he, and then he washes his face along with his beard, separating the strands of hair in his beard. And then he washes his right arm. And then he washes his left arm. And then he washes his head and he covers it, it with water and his ears. And then he washes the right hand side of his body. And then he washes the left hand side of his body. And then he washes his right foot and then his left foot. 
يخرج بهذا يصلي. And then a person now can pray with it, pray with this. الحدث الأصغر. As for the minor state of impurity, الحدث الأصغر. الوضوء. Then this is purified through wudu. ما هي نواقض الوضوء؟ What are those matters which invalidate wudu? الخارج من السبيلين مطلقا من القبل من الدبر من ذكر من أنثى. Firstly, أي شيء يخرج منه ما ناقض الوضوء. Firstly, any discharge from the private parts, the front or the back, from the men or the women, any type of discharge, it invalidates a person's wudu. نعم. بول. Whether it's urine, غائط, or whether it's feces, دود, or whether it is small, uh, نعم, حصة, نعم, small stones, uh, دم, ريح, blood, passing of wind. أي خارج من السبيل الناقض الوضوء. The point is that any discharge from the front or back private parts invalidates wudu. الثاني زوال العقل إذا زال العقل بنوم أو إغماء. أو سكر أو جنون أو مخدر زوال العقل ذهاب العقل. And the second thing which invalidates a person's wudu is when a person loses consciousness, whether this is through sleep or being intoxicated. نوم أو إغماء أو سكر أو جنون أو مخدر. نعم. If a person loses sanity or sleeps. Or faints, or becomes unconscious, or becomes intoxicated. Anything which makes a person's senses or uh, loses consciousness, then this negates wudu. يعني هذا الآن هناك جاء نعاس. For example, the brother over here, if he was becoming tired or in slumber, قال تشعر. You say to him, can you still sense and perceive around you? أسمع كل شيء. He's saying that I can still perceive and hear everything around me. قليل نعاس. Just a little bit of tiredness. Wudu is valid. This person, his wudu is valid. And then this person, ذهب كل شيء. He said, "أنت رأيت إني يعني سافرت إلى مانشستر." Said, "نعم." He was complete deep sleep, such that he saw that he had travelled to Manchester. خلاص وضوء باطل. This person, his wudu is باطل, invalid. تمام هذا الثاني. الثاني من نواقض الوضوء. الثالث أكل لحم الجزور. And then the third matter which invalidates a person's wudu is eating camel meat. And the, fourth, the fourth matter which invalidates a person's wudu is apostasy. May Allah save us. Because this invalidates every action. What are the conditions of wudu? So the conditions of wudu are firstly a person being upon Islam. And a person having sanity. التمييز ليس البلوغ التمييز يعني يفرق بين الأشياء. فهل تصح يصح وضوء الصغير إذا يميز يفرق بين الأشياء. نعم. And also mental maturity by which a person is able to differentiate between different matters. So when it comes to wudu, puberty is not a condition for the validity of wudu. Rather, it is mental maturity. يخطئ كثير من من يترجم يقول إنه في التمييز يقول هو البلوغ هذا خطأ نعم. And so many translators they make a mistake when they translate تمييز as being puberty. It is not puberty. والنية محل القلب والتلفظ بها بدعة. And also from the conditions of wudu is niya and its place is in the heart and to verbalize that niya is an innovation. ولا بد أن تكون النية في كل الوضوء ما يستطيع أن يقطع النية في وسط الوضوء. And the niya of wudu has to remain throughout all the wudu. It's not correct for between the, in the process of wudu, a person leaves the intention. انقطاع موجب الوضوء يعني ما يستطيع توضع ويخرج منه ريح مثلا أو لا بد نقول انتظر حتى ينتهي خروج الريح بعد هذا توضع. نعم. And also the seizing or the stoppage of that which invalidates wudu, meaning if a person is passing wind, he cannot make wudu. Rather, he has to wait until he has finished, and then he begins to make wudu. لا بد إذا كان ناقض الوضوء موجب للاستنجاء أو الاستجمار لا بد يستنجى أو يستجمر قبل الوضوء مثاله الآن هو في دورة المياه هناك في الداخل أكرمكم الله بال ما يستطيع يتوضأ حتى يقصل الذكر نعم يطهر المكان نعم and also if that which necessitated or that which invalidated wudu 
requires istinja or istijmar. For example, if a person was in the toilet and he was urinating, before he makes wudu, he has to wash himself through istinja or istijmar. Now, izalat tahuriyat al ma wa ibahatu. يعني ما يمكن يتوضع بماء نجس أو يتوضع يسرق ماء حتى يتوضع. نعم. And also from the conditions of wudu is that the water has to be pure and the water has to have been obtained legally. So a person cannot make wudu with water which is impure and neither can a person steal water to make wudu. And also from the conditions of wudu is removing anything which prevents water from touching the skin. For example, if a person is painting or if there's a person and that person has dough on their hands, firstly that has to be removed because that prevents water from reaching the skin. Once that has been removed, then he performs wudu. تسمى عندنا في اللغة العربية أو في يعني عرف الناس يسموها مناكير يعني جمع منكرات فلا يصح والله هكذا تسمى مناكير فلا يصح أن تتوضع حتى تزيل هذه المنكرات حتى يكون وضع صحيح نعم نعم يسمى مناكير عندنا ما أدري إيش يسموها منتم نعم مناكير يعني منكرات هكذا يسموها تقصد الملون تقصد الأظافر الصناعية بويا بويا تضع هنا المرأة بس أظافر الصناعية لا مو الأظافر بويا فانيش أي بويا نعم um, so كله منكرات سواء لصق أو كذا كله منكرات نعم. نعم So the point is that anything which prevents water from reaching the skin then that has to be removed Like for example uh, nail varnish If it prevents water from reaching the nails then it has to be removed first نعم طيب كيف توضع how does, how does a person form wudu? Meaning, what is the correct description of forming wudu? First of all, has, first of all, he has to have the intention in his heart and then he mentions the name of Allah. And then he washes his hands. And then, with a single handful of water, a person rinses his mouth and his nose and then uh, dispels the water from his mouth and also from his nose. And he uh, rinses with the right hand and then he blows the water from his nose with his left hand. And this can be done once or twice or thrice. And also washing his face from the top of the from the top of the forehead where hair normally grows to the chin. And from the tip of the ears to the tip of the ears, and also that which is seen from the beard. And the washing of the face in this manner can be done once, twice, or thrice. And then after this, a person washes his whole arm. And what we mean by the whole arm is beginning from the fingertips and the hands, the back of the hands, all the way to and including the elbow, without washing the upper arm. And with regards to the washing of the hands, in the first instance, that was mustahab, that was recommended. Here, washing the hands, it is a rukan, it is a fundamental pillar and obligation of wudu. And then after this, he wipes over his head and he wipes and he's not washed. So he takes wet hands, he begins from the top of the forehead and he wipes to, the, to, to his neck and then he returns the hand to where he began them from. And then with his index finger, he wipes the inner part of his ear. And with his thumb, he wipes the back of his ear. Now, uh, 
فروض الوضوء ستة ها طيب رجلين يغسل الرجل اليمنى مع رجل اليسرى مع الكعبين دون ان يشرع في الساق and then the last part of wudu is for the person to wash his feet and that is he begins with the right foot first to the ankle and then the left foot to the ankle without washing the shins ثم يقول الدعاء الوالد على النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام استحبابا and then he says the dua which has been rated from the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is encouraged furud al wudu sitta the obligations of wudu are six ghasl al wajh ma al madmad wa istinshaq wa istinthar firstly washing the face along with rinsing the mouth and the nose and blowing the water out ghasl al yadayn ma al mirfaqayn and washing the whole arm to the elbow to and including the elbow mash al ras ma al udhunayn and then third wiping over the head along with the ears ghasl al rijlayn ma al ka'bayn and fourth washing the feet to and including the ankles at tartib fifth to do this in the correct sequence al muwala mutaba' yani ma yafsil yani mathalan ba'da an ghasl al wajh ja ittisal min sheikh ibrahim qal kayf al hal qal wallahi bi khair qal mata tantahi al dawra qal insha Allah ghadan قال ماذا اخذتم اليوم قال والله اخذ بعدين يكمل الوضوء لا نعم لا بد اكون عباده متصله نعم so doing wudu in the correct sequence but without any delay between the various parts so for example if a person began wudu then after a short while a phone call came from sheikh ibrahim and he begins conversing with him no rather it has to be done without any unnecessary delay نعم التيمم now we come to tayammum التيمم صفه التيمم the description of tayammum يعني بقلبه first he has to have the intention in his heart بسم الله then he verbalizes and mentions the name of allah يضرب على الارض على التراب على الطين على الرمل على الحصى على الصخر then after this he places his hands upon the earth meaning upon sand or soil or ramal tin hasa sakhar clay or stones or rocks mukait la sajjad qumash jidar ceramic la khashab la as for that which has been manufactured then no like for example carpets or ceramic or walls or wood no darba wahida bidun tafrij al asabi bidun darba wahid and he places his hands upon the earth once without separating between his fingers like this يمسح الوجه and then he wipes over his face وظاهر الكف اليمنى and then the upper uh, the outer part of the right hand وظاهر الكف اليسرى and then the left متى يتيمم when does a person perform tayammum عند عدم الماء when نعم عدم الماء when there is an absence of water او عند عدم القدرة على استعمال الماء مثل برد شديد أو مرض مثلا نعم أو when there is water however a person is unable to utilize water for example if it was extremely cold and if he feared an illness due to using the water then he makes tayammum نعم والله أعلم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا